So we're, we're really excited about our cheese. We're really proud of this particular cheese. Um, as I said, all of them will have the, the year of production, the month of production, the farm of production, and they'll be stamped. So it's really important to look for all of these things when you buy a piece of Reggiana. Make sure that everyone has a rind, a piece of the rind on it. That lets you know it's true Parmigiano Reggiano. Okay. And so those are things you're looking at when you buy the cheese. A lot of people say, what do I do with the rind? And what we recommend is use it as a base for roux or for soups to add extra flavor because it is edible. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people use it as dog treats. Okay. It's a healthy treat for your animal, your pet. Uh -huh. And then uh, the other thing, you can actually broil them and make Parmigiano Reggiano crisps. Almost tastes like potato chips. They're really, really nice because they're oil in the cheese. It's naturally moving through the cheese as the cheese age. So we're really proud of this particular product and love for everyone to come in and try our Reggiano against your local producer's Reggiano. So question, he, um, Jason tends to try cheese with crackers and bread. Is there a rec and, try, and tries it alone. Do you recommend a particular vehicle to try the cheese with or is it best by itself? This cheese um, it, it is very complex and powerful. So typically when we say have a cheese that you're spending a good amount of money for, which is a high quality cheese, mm -hmm. um, we say try it with something really plain. So you don't want crackers that have rosemary, you don't want pepper crackers because you're paying uh, very little for the cracker, but the cracker can definitely the impact cheese. the overall uh, flavor of the cheese. Sure. So this, we like a plain baguette if you want to have bread with it. Mm -hmm. We love serving it with a, a little dollop of honey on it, mm -hmm. or also we love it with a balsamica. Okay. So a little balsamic vinegar. Yeah. And um, so we just think the, in its purest state because this is truly one of the most traditional. It's referred to as the king of cheeses, and I would have to agree with that. It's one of the best cheeses you'll ever taste. Sure. Perfect. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Great. Do you have any other cheese, cheese recommendations? I know Jason tends to look at three cheeses. Okay. Or should we do work with this? Well, we can talk uh, uh, about the Gruyere. Sure. So uh, this is Le Gruyere Reserve, and this is from Switzerland. Okay. Once again, this is one of our favorite cheeses because it's a traditional production cheese. Gruyere Reserve means that it has a specific age on it, mm -hmm. so that would be 12 months for this cheese. Mm -hmm. And all of our um, Gruyere and Emmentaler products come from single source farms. Okay. So that means that you may go into other purveyors that sell this product, and it will meet a lot of criteria. But we know the farmer that makes this cheese just like we know the farmers um, or the ch cheese maker because they're not always farmers, let me be clear. Sure. But we know um, the cows uh -huh. and the farmers that raise the cows that are used for this cheese. We know the exact production of this cheese. We know who's aging it for us. So we really feel like we close that cycle with where your food comes from. Okay. So. That's one thing we do at Whole Foods Market that we're really proud of is closing that cycle between Great. the production, the farm, and then getting it all to you. So a lot of people I know say we, we want to know fork to farm, but we really have been uh, proud of bringing that to the United States for a number of years. As a matter of fact, in 2010, Whole Foods Market will be celebrating its 30th anniversary. And so we've been bringing these types of products to our uh, guests for all of those years, and we'll just continue to try and bring them the best cheeses. So, Le Gruyere is another traditional cheese. Perfect. Let's talk about some American cheeses. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. Okay, so uh, we're right now we're in our Massachusetts store in Symphony, and it's our downtown store. So, I'm going to bring out a local cheese right here. We have from Westfield Farm. The Hubbardston Blue, and I would say this is one of my, uh, actually my favorite goat blues come from Westfield Farm. Okay. Uh, so this will be Bob Stetson, mm -hmm. and uh, we're really proud to be uh, partners, he's a producer partner, uh, and sells to many of our stores. This is a cheese that's won many awards at the American Cheese Society, it has a nice creaminess to it. And it's local, 
and it brings a lot of the components that uh, you're looking for, not only in a blue cheese, but also in a goat cheese. There are a lot of people that um, have problems uh, with the lactose components of cow's milk products. So sure. we always say, try goat milk or sheep milk, because it may not be that you're fully lactose intolerant, but of course, cow's milk, uh, the molecules are really big, so mm -hmm. goat's milk is really easy to digest. So we really recommend um, this particular product. We also, in terms of goat products like uh, Vermont butter and cheese creamery, mm -hmm. which is, is based uh, right in Vermont, your neighboring state. So we have a few of their products. Sure. I know I just saw some in here. Do we have any VBC? Oh, here we go, the bamboo. These look nice this time. Yeah. So this is uh, Allison Hooper. Great. Cheese maker at Vermont Butter and Cheese in the Bombouche is a, um, a further aged goats goat mm -hmm. product, and she collects from farms all in the area where this production occurs. So she Great. doesn't actually raise the goats, but she works with the goats. Okay. Uh, so those would be some of my favorites. We have a, a great, Fantastic. vibrant, artisan American uh -huh. cheese scene happening in the United States. And uh, I encourage everyone to go on the American Cheese Society website and look and understand who some of these producers are, especially in your area, uh, up here in the Northeast. You've got some dynamic producers in Vermont and uh, New York and uh, Massachusetts. So get out there and really find out who these producers are and support local because they work really, really hard to bring you a good product every day. But they're not very large, so they really count on you to support them. So I would say get out and really try and support your local producers because that's what we try and do as a big company. We still try and target and support because we're really a community-based store and everyone can tell you that that's worked with us. So okay. um, those are a few of my favorites uh, this week. and. Uh, there's more every week, so I appreciate your asking. Thank you, Kathy, so much. It's great right. interview you. Take right. care. Thanks. Thank Bye. Thank you. Okay, that was awesome. Um, she was amazing. Um, I really, she was very insightful and probably one of the best interviews yet. Um, I really cannot thank her enough for spending time with us. So enjoy the episode and enjoy.